what's up youtube this is your boy kona enthusiast we're back with another video so i've had some people ask me over the last couple of months how do i manage to get better traction in my car how am i hooking so well with a front wheel drive so i'm going to talk to you all about a couple things that i did to my car and what you can do if you have a hyundai kona or even an elantra or velocity so let's go ahead and get this video started <music> guys so yeah i'm out running some errands um i had to run a couple of errands um so i figured while i'm running errands i go ahead and make this video for you all um first stop i had to make was at o'reilly's uh, to get this right here it's basically fuel system cleaner this one specifically for um, gasoline direct injected engine so if you have a gdi engine um you can use this one right here it's recommended that you do that um at least with the hyundai n models that you do it one once an oil change, um, I've missed the last couple, so I'll probably end up doing it again. Um, but you just get the bottle, put it with a full tank of gas. Um, yeah, it costs eight or ten dollars at Advanced Auto, AutoZone, all those places. But that is not why you came here for this video. So I want to talk to you all about the best ways to get traction um, in this car. So from the factory, um, the traction was bad. Um, the Velocitors and the Konas, unfortunately, have the um, the Pirelli P0 tires. They didn't last long. But um, even without that, the motor mount is just really bad on this car. Um, the Civic Type R, they kind of had this issue, but they put pe the power down better. Um, for front wheel drive, you know, you expect some wheel hop, but it is atrocious on the factory. And I'm gonna insert a clip pretty soon for you to see it. Um, it's, it's basically shakes so much that it just, it's concerning, it makes you think you're gonna break something because it's, it's just violent. As you can see, um, it's not good on a car. At least I don't think it's good on a car to be, you know, shaking and moving around that much. So um, yeah, that was the issue that I had with this car. I was the first mod that I did on this car about a year ago. Um, there's a couple options that you can do uh, to alleviate that wheel hop. Obviously the motor mount is the number one option. So with that, um, the one that I went with was the sixth element engineering mount. I believe it was about $270. Uh, you can go with that or you can go with the Boomba brand. Um, they have their own version of that for the uh, Veloster, Elantra, and the Kona. Uh, both of those basically do the same thing. It's just a stiffer mount uh, to put the power down better. And if you're looking to get tuned, um, I recommend that anyway, just because you know, you're just gonna have even worse wheel hop and even more damage to the car. So I really recommend um, either of those, those options, but you can also go with the PowerFlex bushings. Um, they're purple or yellow, something like that. And um, you basically just take your factory mount apart and, and replace your bushings with the stiffer bushing. Um, so there's an advantage to both of these setups. So the setup that I'm on right now, um, the advantage to it is that it puts power down a little bit better than the PowerFlex bushings just because it's the entire mount versus part of the mount being changed. Um, and I mean, the installation process would be about the same for both. But the downside to this one is that at times, especially when the air conditioning is running, there's a lot more vibrations at idle. Once you're driving, it's smoother. The power delivery is way smoother than stock. But you still have to deal with the, still have to deal with the fact of having vibrations when you're idling. And sometimes that can get annoying. Um, the advantage of the power flex is, yes, it puts power down better. It doesn't put it down quite as well as what an actual mount would do but it still puts it down better. Um, there's not really much wheel hop then, uh, but the main advantage of that one is there is no wheel hop whatsoever. Um, and so that's, and that's the thing about it right there that I like personally. So um, down the road, maybe I'll swap it out um, to back to my factory route to those bushings, who knows? But personally, um, I'm happy with this setup. Um, it, it, it hooks very well, so I'm okay. And I know, I like I said in earlier videos, I plan on getting tuned. I planned on, you know, adding some other modifications to the car. And honestly, whatever's the stiffest option is probably what I would need for this car. Um, I probably 
will need a different tire as well. Um, right now, I am on the Michelin Pilot Sport um, All Seasons. Pilot Sport for All Seasons, they're amazing tires. Um, if you're going the All Season route, I highly recommend this tire or the Continental DWS 06. Uh, pretty much everybody I know with the Konas and the Launchers, if they go the All Season route, those are the two tires that everybody raves over, especially the. Um, especially the Continentals. Um, they're priced better than the Michelins. The only reason I, I was able to get the Michelins um, is because of my Costco membership. The tires are just much cheaper there. I got them for cheaper than the Continentals actually. Um, so that's actually where I'm headed now to get um, to fill up on gas because I have two miles left to empty and Costco has the best gas as far as quality out of you know that Sam's and BJ's um, and their pricing is pretty good compared to everything else. But anyways guys, yeah, so the tires I recommend, like I said, are, for the all seasons will be the Continental DWS Extreme Contact. Um, they're all seasons. And then you also have the um, the these tires that I have on my car now, which are the Michelin Pilot Sport for all seasons. You also have another one um, by General, uh, I believe they're called the General G-Max all season tires. They're basically the same brand as Continental. They're, they're owned by Continental and their quality and, and tread life is pretty similar. It may not be quite as good in the snow, but in the rain and colder temps, it performs the same from what I've heard. So that's a great option. Now, if you wanna go the summer tire route, then obviously that is your best bet right there. Um, so the summer tire, uh, you know, if you live in a warmer climate or you don't pull out your car in the summer or in the winter, um, then a summer tire is a great option right there. So with the summer tire, you have, um, you know, the, the Michelin Pilot Sport Cups. You know, you can even go with the Pilot Sport 4, um, the 4S's, which is what the Hyundai Elantra in comes with, believe it or not. Um, so they have that advantage right there. And, and I really recommend that tire if you're going the summer route. You also have the Continental, um, their extreme contact tires that are uh, basically made for um, driving in, in the, the summertime. So those two tires are amazing. You also have the Firehawk Indies. Um, I am biased, but I've had those tires before and they're really good. They, they surprised me. They're the Firestone Firehawk Indies and they do really good um, as far as hooking. Um, I've seen some Kia Stingers with those. I've seen a couple Mustangs of them. They're just a really, really meaty tire um, compared to the other two. Uh, they tend to hook better, but as far as daily driving, the Michelin and Continentals are better tires. But as far as if you're trying to just get the best time or whatever, I really recommend those tires right there. Um, and they wear pretty well for what they are. Um, but yeah, guys, that's that's my recommendations as far as trying to put the power down in this car. Um, I'm gonna insert a clip pretty soon so you're able to see how well it hooks. Um, there was a couple clips I recorded at night. Um, and I had to be like 30 or 40 degrees. And I mean, obviously launch control does a very good job of putting the power down as is. But um, even without launch control, I might, in the cold temperatures, as cold as it's been this summer, it might go down to 20 or 30 degrees here. And, you know, I still was able to hook fairly well. It was spin a little bit, but there was no wheel hop whatsoever. I think the only time I ever had wheel hop with this setup was probably if it's raining and I just decided to hone and hit, hit the gas all the way in mode that would be the only time that I would, you know, basically wheel hop. But other than that, I don't get wheel hop in the drive whatsoever. It hooks very well at the drag strip. Um, some of you have, may have already seen that, which is where a lot of the comments came from. Um, and uh, and basically people reaching out on Instagram, how, how am I gripping so well on the track with, you know, this with this car? Because it's front wheel drive, it's making basically 300 horsepower, 300 by 50 torque, somewhere in that realm. So how am I gripping so well? And this is the reason I had this motor mount. At the time I was on the Continental tires. I haven't raced with these Michelin tires yet, but um, it's starting to warm up. I'm sure I'll be able to race with it soon. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, that's my recommendation. I know a couple other guys, they have the launcher ends. They have done a power flex option and it seems like they grip pretty well. Um, uh, like I said, it's not quite as well as what I have, but overall it is better than expected. So, um, as you can see, I'm at Costco now, get ready to get the fuel. Their pricing is really, really good here. Um, you know, it's typically cheaper than pretty much the regular gas station and their gas quality is actually ranked up there with, um, the top tier fuels such as uh, Shell, Exxon, etc. But yeah, this is where I like to go for the best pricing. As you can see, I literally have so many, uh, so so low of fuel that I literally have no miles left to empty. So yeah, that's a problem, but I am in eco mode. I should be able to make it to the pump because this car tends to over exaggerate how many miles I actually have left, so. Yeah guys, this uh, 355 for the premium here. I went to Exxon the other day, it had to be like 
405 or whatever. But yeah, it's gonna be a full tank of gas. So yeah, the pricing is definitely gonna be up. Yeah, $42. So I guess ain't bad considering it's a whole tank. Cause you saw I had like no miles stuff to empty, so. Now that I've got my car filled up, I can show you all how this car drives in end mode. How does it hook now? Um, today on the 70, it's 72 degrees right now, which is crazy because a week ago it had to be like, I think 25 or 30 degrees a week ago. So temps are warming up, but it's definitely a big change. God, it pops just sounds so good. All right, so I'm gonna have to do a quick pull here. Probably gonna do over boost just to, you know, show you all how well it hooks. Get lucky enough to do that. All right, here we go. You see no wheel hop whatsoever. And there's the popo. Yeah, it's fine a little bit, but part of why I was spinning is because my tire pressure is at 39. I just got an oil change yesterday, and for whatever reason, the dealership keeps putting my tire pressure really high, so I had to go back and adjust that. But yeah, it hooks really well. So yeah guys, as you all can see, um, it hooks very well. Um, it does a really good job of putting the power down now with the motor mount, with the tires that I have. Like I said, my tire pressure is up. Usually when the tire pressure is at 36, I hook consistently in these temperatures. Um, but yeah guys, I, I really appreciate you watching this video. I just wanted to get all of you on game with how to get better traction in your car. Um, I know that's probably like was my biggest gripe when I first got this car was just the obnoxious wheel hopping that it did. So yeah i got that changed and i hook very consistently um you can watch my previous video of me at the drag strip i hook very well at the drag strip now um typically my zero to 60s now are like four nine my quarter mile has been 13 one to 13 two um 13 three um anyway go low 13s and upper fours so zero 60 like i mean i'm happy with it for a stock car i'm excited to get tuned to see of course will it still hook at that point i i don't know but at least I know that the wheel hopping is eliminated. That's that's the main goal. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna put some links in the video in, in the video description of the motor mounts, the tires I recommend, um, all of that stuff for you all to go ahead and check out for your car. Um, also, one last thing I, I forgot to mention, those of you with the Kona in and the Veloster in, um, well, not sure on the Veloster, but I know in the Kona you can run 245 with. That's what I'm running now. Um, the Elantra in runs that from the factory. They have a different chassis that allows that for whatever reason they didn't want to give us that but yeah we've got two we got 245 lift tires on here they grip very well um and honestly it's not too much difference on price to even worry about um uh, so yeah guys i do appreciate you for watching this video if this is your first time watching one of my videos please make sure you like comment and subscribe also i'm about to go ahead and get another pool in thought it was fire trucks are coming Yeah, guys uh, appreciate you watching it like comment and subscribe also follow me on instagram my instagram is ic underscore kona underscore in um other than that guys i appreciate you for watching this video and i hope you all have a great day